Genesis 3, reading there from verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. We ask now the Lord to be very close to us that the subject matter of preparing for the close of probation that is a theme of our conference will truly reach home to us individually uh, to prepare for the close of probation we have a need to understand what probation actually is and also what is involved in this preparation during the time of probation before it closes. And so we want to go right back in our meditation to when Adam and Eve first sinned uh, it looked like that was it. God had said, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. But God gave them another chance. Another opportunity was given. And that's what we read in our scripture reading, that God said to them there in Genesis 3 verse 15, that um, there would be a woman's seed that would be born. He will put enmity between Satan, the serpent, and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. And her seed shall bruise the head of the serpent and the serpent will bruise his heel. And here is spelt out for us the probation that was given to man. If Jesus was going to be that, as Jesus was going to be that seed, man was given an opportunity to receive that seed and to have uh, an opportunity for for restoration from sin. Uh, in if we turn here to Romans chapter five, as we meditate on this privilege of and this opportunity that was given to um, the human race through Adam, through Christ, Romans chapter five. We read verse. 12 and 15 and 18 and 19. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Verse 15, but not as the offence, so also is the free gift. For if through the offence of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. So, here is the probation. This is the understanding of probation. That through Jesus Christ, there is a gift that God's grace has offered to the human race that they may yet recover. And we go on reading in verse 18. Therefore, as by the offence of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So, because of Jesus Christ, by that one man, 
we have received probation, which is justification, which requires our faith and our belief to be able to appreciate and benefit by that probation. We come to verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So here we have the kernel, the foundation of understanding what probation is. Because of Adam's sin, we should all be dead. But God has given us the free gift of his grace in Jesus Christ so that we can be justified and now having been justified, we are then to be able to, uh, by the obedience of Christ, we might be also made righteous. So during this time of justification, of, of, free, of grace that has been given to us, we have been given a, a, a wonderful time of being able to reach for that righteousness that God has given us in his gift of Jesus Christ. And this meditation of probation is expressed also in Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20 to 23. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? and not that he should return from his ways and live? Can we see here? Time has been given to the sinner so that he might turn from his sins, that he might return to God and live again in eternity if he will but make use of that time and... uh, and apply himself to what is written, because God did not have any pleasure in the death of the wicked. While he said, the sinner must die, he says, but I'm going to give you opportunity and time to make restitution. So we, we read in the book, Faith I Live By, the Faith I Live By, page 75, In paragraph 3 it says, The instant man accepted the temptations of Satan and did the very things God had said he should not do, that instant Christ, the Son of God, stood between the living and the dead, saying, Let the punishment fall on me. I will stand in man's place He shall have another chance. What is probation? Another chance. And as I was researching the word of God 
there was a beautiful quote that when Adam and Eve were first placed in the Garden of Eden, they had their time of probation to prepare to develop a perfect character before they had fallen. That was their probation. They failed in that probation, but he gave them a second one. He gave the human race a second probation. And there are many people who say that there's going to be, after the, during the thousand years, there's another time of probation. That is not true. God has already given the human race a second probation. We read again from uh, Testimony, Volume 1, page 192, paragraph 2. Jesus has purchased for us redemption. It is ours, but we are placed here on probation to see if we will prove worthy of eternal life. So that's probation. That Jesus, the moment that we read there before, the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, Jesus stepped into the, into the gap. He said, I will take their sins, I will die for them, give them another chance, give them another probation to prove whether they will appreciate and benefit from this. The, um, uh, the meditation is further expanded here in, um, in another quote which I want to read to enlarge this for us. It's, um, it's found in, um, what's it, CTBH stand for again? It's CTBH, page 15, paragraph 3. And it says, We can understand the value of the human soul only as we realize the greatness of the sacrifice made for its redemption. Now, we're, we're expanding here. We're trying to understand this amazing meaning of probation. We can understand... Christian? No. Uh, we can understand the value of the human soul only as we realize the greatness of the sacrifice made for its redemption. Probation is another um, meaning for, uh, for redemption, a period given for redemption. And a sacrifice was made for it. The word of God declares that we are not our own, that we are bought with a price. It is at an immense cost that we have been placed upon vantage ground where we can find liberty from the bondage of sin wrought by the fall in Eden. Vantage ground. Did you pick up? We're trying to understand what is probation and what is involved in probation. Probation is a period of time in which we are placed on vantage ground at a huge cost where we can find liberty from the bondage of sin wrought by the fall in Eden. Adam's sin plunged the race into hopeless misery. But by the sacrifice of the Son of God, a second probation, here it is, you see, a second probation, because they had their first probation before the fall. A second probation was granted to man. In the plan of redemption, a way of escape is provided for all who will avail themselves of it. 
is a piecing together in your mind. Probation is a time given for us to avail ourselves of the costly um, sacrifice that was made for us. By the sacrifice of the Son of God, a second probation was granted. In the plan of redemption, a way of escape is provided for all who will avail themselves of it. God knew that it was impossible for man to overcome in his own strength and he has provided help for him. How thankful we should be that a way is open for us by which we can have access to the Father, that the gates are left ajar so that the beams of light from the glory which may shine upon those who will receive them, so that the beams of light from the glory within may shine upon those who will receive them. Probation is a time given for us to avail ourselves of the sacrifice of Christ so that we may, if we will avail ourselves of that, if we will receive the glory shining from heaven, then we may be ushered into eternal life again. This is what is involved in probation. And uh, to having appreciated what we have just been reading here, what probation is, we'll, we'll read the um, Webster's Dictionary of the meaning of probation. It says there, the state of a man in the present life in which he has the opportunity of proving his character and being qualified for a happier state. That's the dictionary meaning of probation. But we've seen what is involved in that. To prove a character of a person bef uh, to qualify him for a happier state. Um, the Oxford Dictionary puts it, the testing of conduct or character of a person before full admission. We are given probation time. And in this probation time, a second probation, we are to avail ourselves of all the gifts of the Holy Ghost, of Jesus, of Jesus and of the, what the Father has given to us, to embrace the enabling of God to develop a character to prove, to qualify our, our a position with God again, which we had lost through sin. Through sin, the human race was expelled from Eden to regain that place. Jesus was provided. He spoke about himself in John chapter 14, verse 6. You know that scripture well. John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The, uh, that was the, these were the words that Jesus spoke to, um, to Thomas who said, please show us the way. We don't know the way. And that's when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So in this period of, of probation, Jesus has been provided for a way, for the way to the Father, back to the Father. 
there is so much to this word of probation that we often do not stop to to closely enough examine and that's why we are doing it just now and after this meditation let us not quickly forget but appreciate what is um, provided for us in God's providence this amazing um, dimension of probation that Jesus said I have provided in myself. I am the way. Je- Jesus has provided a way and a time period for us. If we ca- return there to Romans chapter 5, uh, where we were reading in 12 and so on, in Romans 5 verse 8, uh, this time 8 to 10, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than. Now follow carefully. Here is the way Here is what is understood again in the period of probation. Jesus died for every sinner. God does not want any person to to die. He's given the whole human race the opportunity to put away their sins and, and live a righteous life. Here it is in verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Here we see what is involved during this time of probation. Probation has been given to every human sinner. Justification has been provided. But now that justification has been provided, uh, God's love is commended to us, not just in giving us justification, but we're not yet fitted for a place. So we are going to be saved by the life of Christ. Being much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. If when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled. You see, probation is a provision of reconciliation. And having been reconciled by the blood of Christ, we are then given this time to be saved. Because reconciliation is just a provision by the blood of Christ so that the enemies of God can be reconciled so that then they can be saved. Many people think by by believing in Jesus they're, they're saved. No, they're reconciled. Then having been reconciled, they are now to be saved. And that's what the time of probation has been given for. If we uh, notice also these two aspects, reconciliation or justification, and then salvation, There are two words used here in Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Romans 8, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. 
and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So, God calls every sinner, come and be saved. I've given you probation. And my probation is found, if you will believe, I will justify you. And if you will be justified, then you will also be glorified. Now, if we just go back to verse 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. To do what? He knew the people that would accept the probationary time and apply themselves. He says that he did predestinate to do what? To be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the first born among many brethren. What is here included in this time of probation? It's spelled out for us here. To be conformed to the image of his son. If you have been justified, you have been given the opportunity to ultimately be glorified or conformed to the image of his son. We are to be changed from glory to glory by beholding. To be glorified means to be changed. To be justified means to have the opportunity to be changed. We have been placed in a position that God accepts us because Jesus has died for us and his death has been in the place of my death for my sin. Now that I have been justified, I am now to be conformed to his image. And that's what is to take place during the time of probation. Uh, Let's go to Thessalonians. Um, in the uh, I think it's the second Thessalonians 2 if it's not second it'll be first Thessalonians um, That is um, let's go let me check this bear, bear with me please. It's second second Thessalonians chapter two verse thirteen and fourteen. You can see here how this links up together with what Apostle Paul meant in regards to justification and glorification. It says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the scriptures we were reading now are putting the picture together. To be whom whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. To be conformed to the image of his Son, or to be sanctified by the Spirit because of the belief of the truth. So we've been called by the gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where to be glorified means to be sanctified, means to have the glorious character of Jesus, to be conformed to his image. So there it is. Justification and sanctification are placed into view in this 
comprehension of the time of probation. Uh, let's read um, The Faith I Live By. Uh, page 116. The Faith I Live By. Page 116. Uh, where we read in paragraph 2, the righteousness by which we are justified is imputed and the righteousness by which we are sanctified is imparted. The first is our title to heaven. The second is our fitness to heaven. So probation has been given us by the fact that we have been given the imputed righteousness of Christ. It's, a, it's something, and the word imputed mean, has something to do with written to our account. If we will believe in Jesus, then although we are terrible sinners, we are now regarded as though we have never sinned. That is now a title to heaven. But just because you've got a title to heaven, does that mean you can get to heaven? There is something else needed. Just like when you have to apply for a, uh, when, to be able to leave your country and get into another country, in most cases, you, in all cases you need a passport, but in most cases you also need a visa which examines the person's fitness whether he is going to whether he's got any record of the past that makes him un, unworthy to be able to get into that country so uh, there is a passport a title to heaven that's given through justification and there is a visa to heaven a fitness for heaven which is sanctification and um, this is uh, beautifully further expressed in the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 26, chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Mark, chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. This is, this is the concept of gaining a fitness for heaven. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of it herself, First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. Now here is what Jesus used as an illustration of the title. The seed falls into the ground and it, it germinates. Now there is a potential of that germinating seed to be able to take in, be taken into the garner. But it can't be. It's got to grow. It has to grow first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. And not until it has fully developed and the corn is in the ear and all well dried out can it then be harvested and taken into the garner. This is the process of justification and sanctification. Justification takes place because the seed falls into the ground and it produces a, a blade. The kingdom of heaven is like that, said Jesus. The person has a precious opportunity, but he must grow and he must develop the fruit. And here we read from 
Volume 2 of Spiritual Gifts, SP, 2SP, page 243, paragraph 3 says, she, she just quoted the scripture we were re- uh, reading there, Kingdom of God is a man that sows the seed. The seed here spoken of is the word of God sown into the heart and made fruitful by divine grace. The truth is sown into the heart and made fruitful by divine grace. If the truth takes root in the heart, it will sooner or later spring into life and bear fruit. The life and character will show the nature and quantity of the seed sown. But the work of cultivating is the work of a lifetime. The principles of truth once planted in the soul are to be carried out into the daily duties of life. The growth of Christian character is gradually, every word counts here, is gradually like the advancement of the natural plant through its various stages of development. But, nevertheless, the progress is continual. As in nature, so it is in grace. The plant must either grow or die. So, this is probation. It is from the time that the seed falls into the ground and it grows through the winter months and arrives through into, into spring and then in spring and heading towards summer and in summertime there is the harvest. Probationary time to the full growth. And it says here that it can either die or grow. And that's that's what happens during the time of probation. Some plants die. And the parable of Jesus where the sower went forth, some of it fell on the wayside, some of it fell into stony ground, and some of it fell onto good ground. There is the situation during the time of probation. What happens to some of the seed that has been sown? And on, on this, in the same book, Two Spiritual Gift, uh, Spiritual, what is it? Spirit of Prophecy, 2SP, 244, paragraph 1, it goes on to say, Day by day, the sanctifying influence of the Spirit of God almost imperceptibly leads those who love the ways of truth toward the perfection of righteousness till finally the soul is ripe for the harvest. The life work is ended. God gathers in his grain. There is no period in the Christian life when there is no more to learn, no higher attainments to reach. Sanctification is the work of a lifetime. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, then the ripening of the harvest, for when the fruit is perfect, it is ready for the sickle. Are we getting the message very simple? Very simply here, we are understanding that Probation is given that we may perfect a character fit for eternity. And 
in everything that we've been reading, we have already been introduced to all the detail that we want to continue to study in reference to how this all takes place. It is by the word sown into the heart. And as we open our hearts to that word, as we cultivate during this time of development, probation, we receive the blessings of the precious gifts. And I just want to, um, I want to, before we conclude, truly appreciate that we don't come away with a false impression. Probation is I've got to develop my character. Oh, and I start to work hard at it. I start to, to be anxious about it, that um, my character is not going to be perfect. As, as we realise that we're heading towards the close of probation now, we can be filled with a deep sense of anxiety. Oh, I'm not going to make it. That would be a false conclusion. Uh, it says again in Testimony Volume 4, uh, I read before, first selected messages 318, that's 1 SM 318, paragraph 4, where I quoted, the time of probation is given us that we may perfect a character fit for eternity. And then Testimony Volume 4, 147, paragraph 2, the precious time of probation is passing and few realize that it is given them for the purpose of preparing for eternity. So everything that we've been reading, it's Sister White is suggesting that few people realize that everything that has been provided for them in the gospel of Jesus Christ is a is a engagement with the word that prepares them for eternity it's an engagement in the in the developmental stages of conforming to the image of Christ of conforming to his glory to be changed and so as i mentioned few realize that but as we study this here and we begin to realize it we can start going, oh no, it's nearly over. And have, what am I like? And we feel, are filled with this terrible sense. So not to come away with this false impression to gain a fitness. We need to understand what was suggested in our um, material here that it is by receiving the mercy and goodness of God. It is by receiving the, 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 the word, by receiving Jesus. And as we receive Jesus, this is going to take place. But we must receive Jesus. So let's read here in a conclusion the introduction to our next subjects that we want to pursue. Here in Ephesians... Chapter 2, because what we want to do at this conference is to become fully uh, conversant with the entire engagement and understanding of this activity. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, where it says, For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works. See, this is strange. We've got to develop a character. But it, it tells us here it's by grace through faith and that's not even of ourselves. Uh, it is not even of works lest any man should boast. For in this work 
we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It is important for us to get the correct appreciation of what is involved in this probation time. And here it is pointed out that it's not by works. It's by faith. If it was by works, you could say, well, I'm now ready for heaven. That would be boasting. But it is by the gift of God through Jesus Christ that he will work in us created in Christ Jesus unto those good works that time is going to be given to attain to. And uh, here we want to read the spirit of prophecy in Selected Messages, Book 1, page 364, in paragraph 1 it says, if we are trying to get to that condition of perfection, of the glorious character of God by works, Sister White says here, he who is trying to reach heaven by his own works in keeping the law is attempting an impossibility. How many of you have been attempting this impossibility. But we keep on trying, don't we? We are attempting an impossibility. Man cannot be saved without obedience, but his works should not be of himself. Christ should work in him to will and to do of his good pleasure. If a man could save himself by his own works, he might have something in himself in which to rejoice. The effort that man makes in his own strength to obtain salvation is represented by the offering of Cain. All that man can do without Christ is polluted with selfishness and sin. But that which is wrought through faith is acceptable to God. When we seek to gain heaven through the merits of Christ, the soul makes progress. Now we've just gained that probation has been given to us to make progress. And probationary time is nearly running out and we need to prepare so that when probation is closed we will be on the right side of, of that experience. And here it says that, uh, that all that man can do without Christ is polluted. When we seek to gain heaven through the merits of Christ then the soul makes progress. We are in need of understanding the linkage of the progress with the right method, not by works, and yet we have to obey. It is alone gained by an uns something that is not polluted with selfishness, which is total resignation to the merits of Christ by which we will make progress. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we may go on from strength to strength, from victory to victory, for through Christ, the grace of God has worked out our complete salvation. And it is my prayer that during this conference, as we apply ourselves to this, during the probationary time, we will not delay the progress by not understanding this important ingredient 
of not of my own works but by the progress that is found through the merits of Jesus Christ. Probationary time has been given us to gain not the anxious tenseness of reaching perfection, but probation has time has been given us to receive the word Jesus Christ, to gain a true knowledge of Jesus. If we notice there in um, John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus made these beautiful made this beautiful statement that the people may have eternal life and this life is found where? How is it gained? That they may know the Father. It's the knowledge of the Father and Jesus Christ that's going to get us there and that's what probationary time has been given us for. Take John 17, I've got Luke here, sorry. John 17, reading verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. What is probation time is given us for then? To know God. And to know Jesus, because as we know him and as we take hold of his knowledge, of his merits, then we will make progress. So in this sense, probation time has been given to us, not in the sense of anxious trying to develop a good character. Here in um, Bible commentary, (coughs) we need to believe in Jesus not just believing in general, but to believe savingly. Very important little statement here from from Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 1145, in paragraph 11, it says, she quotes John 17, 3, These words mean much. It is only by knowing Christ that we can know God, the scent of God calls upon all to listen to these words. They are the words of God and should all should give heed to them for by them they will be judged. To know Christ savingly is to be vitalized by spiritual knowledge to practice his words. Without this, All else is valueless. So can we see how important these words are to wrap our head, our understanding around? To know God and Jesus Christ is eternal life. She emphasizes here, to know Christ savingly is to be vitalized by spiritual knowledge to practice his words. If I'm going to prepare for the close of probation, which means I have to reach that perfection, and there's little time left, then I must hurry to know Jesus. Because if I know Jesus, savingly, what will happen? I will be vitalized by that spiritual knowledge. It's going to vitalize me. It's going to, it's going to be uh, a, a vivifying Um, uh, living energy that is going to provide for that perfection. It's a vitalizing spiritual knowledge and it vitalizes me to practice his words to produce that good fruit. And so the time of probation has been given for us to engage in the knowledge of Jesus because that's the only way by which we're going to get there. We uh, notice in Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 to 14 Jeremiah 
chapter 29, reading there in verses 11 to 14. Here God is speaking these beautiful words of comfort that we must get to know him by finding him. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's what we're studying here, preparation for the end. To give us a, 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 an expected end, how can we get it? He says, I have these thoughts for you. Then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. If I'm going to reach that, that close of probation perfection, he says, you need to know me. You need to embrace me. Because this, the vitalizing power that's going to cause you to be developed into this perfect person is dependent upon you searching for me with all your heart. Upon finding him, the true righteousness and fitness for heaven may be gained. It is not by anxious concern about whether I am right yet or not. It's by keeping my eyes focused on him, knowing him, seeking for him with all my heart. That probation time has been given us because the rest will take care of itself. By beholding Jesus, Romans chapter 8, it says it very powerfully there. We look at him and as we watch him being made perfect by he himself destroying the power of sin in his own flesh, we will be inspired. And I want to conclude with this beautiful quote from God's Amazing Grace, page 157, AG 157, paragraph 2. God stands back of every promise he has made. With your Bible in your hands, say, I have done as thou hast said. I present thy promise. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek for God with all your heart. Stand with that Bible promise before the Lord and say, Lord, I have done as you have said. I present this promise. I'm asking you. I'm depending on you. I'm not going to uh, rely upon my own because I know it's all, it's all coloured with my own selfishness. I need you, Lord. And as I look for him and search for him with all my heart, he says, I will be found of you and I will work in you the righteousness of Christ. So, to summarize, probation is a time of grace given to gain a fitness for heaven. And that fitness can only be gained by personal engagement with Christ. And this is what we have been gaining from God's word here. And so we, we have commenced this time of our conference with this meditation so that we can then carefully and prayerfully go through every successive subject in the future now to appreciate the full uh, entirety of what is involved for me to be finally ready for Jesus to say, it is done. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is filthy, 
Let him be filled with still. God grant us his Holy Spirit to appreciate these things with a full, intelligent understanding. Amen. 